In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ Jesus was given to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit.
put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And, as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. Here ends the reading. Yeah, 
professional yet? <laughs> he says, <"Ooh." laughs> Alright, well how did you get on your sports team, I wonder? Did you have tryouts or did you just kind of show up? Did you have to, I don't know, what did you have to do? You just had to fill out some paperwork, that's it? Alright, how about you? Anybody? Alright. Okay, tell me what our gospel reading today was about. Anybody, jump in. What was our gospel? Wait a minute, which one was the gospel reading? We better start there. Which one was the gospel reading? Very good. Excellent. What was it about?
So, I'm going to read you a description of my astrological sign. So you all know me a little better, and you can see what kind of person I truly am. And I got this off the internet, so obviously it's completely true. It says, You are the purest and most beautiful of angels. God made you make sure you were born with original sin because he knew you weren't going to commit any other sins. You're so pure, sometimes God asks you for advice. Even God says, okay, I get it, you're good, but maybe take it down a notch because you're making everyone else feel guilty. And this is my favorite. You have to wear heavy boots just to keep them floating up into heaven. <laughs> Why are none of you even looking concerned that I'm going to float away in heaven right now? <laughs> This came from the internet, so it's real. And look, I didn't even wear boots today to help hold me down. Maybe you all know me better than that. Maybe you know I'm not all that. Maybe you know what a sinner I am. Maybe you realize the folly in astrology. Maybe you even realize it's more than folly. It's dangerous. It does not honor God, and it gives Satan a wider opening to reach into our lives. An old friend of mine someone I hadn't seen in person for quite a while, recently started posting horoscopes on social media for all to see. I became more and more disturbed about that as this continued, and after some thoughtful prayer, I decided I needed to say something. Predicting the future through the use of astrology is a form of the occult. And even if you're just reading these things for fun, it's not just quackery. It is not harmless. These things are mentioned repeatedly in Scripture and directly and specifically forbidden by God. We are to depend on the Lord alone to lead us through this life. And especially in times of trouble and uncertainty, we should lean on Him, not on some nonsense we see on the Internet, and certainly not on the occult. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, Keep us, your loving children, safe from the forces of evil we don't understand. Help us to turn to you alone for guidance and to trust your word to lead us in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> it's one thing to pull a tiny slip of paper out of a fortune cookie, laugh when reading it with your friends, and then throw it away. It's something else to read your horoscope faithfully every morning and then look for those predictions to come true as you go throughout your day. I don't mean to just pick on horoscopes either, but the occult takes many forms. It's tempting, though, if God seems distant to you, or if he isn't giving you the answers you're seeking, to find someone or something else that will. But truth and wisdom come from God, and when we seek those things in any other manner, we are in dangerous territory. In our reading today from 1 Samuel, King Saul does this very thing. Not with his horoscope, but by consulting a medium. He knew better, of course. In fact, he ordered that all mediums and wizards should be driven out of the land. He forbade any practice of the occult and commanded the people to trust in the Lord alone. Yet when he found himself on the eve of battle, the pitch of fear in the face of the enemy overwhelmed him. And because God didn't answer or reassure him, he sought someone who would. We do this in our lives, don't we? If we have a big decision to make, or we're seeking some confirmation that our lives will work out just the way we planned, it's so tempting to circumvent God altogether. After all, his soft whisper is so much harder to hear than the loud, clear voice of someone else, someone without God-given authority to speak, someone we don't have to wait on for an answer to our prayers or questions. Scripture tells us that false prophets are everywhere in the world, and as the Apostle Paul warns us, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Satan lies in wait, hoping we will succumb to this weakness, and our ears might be inclined for a false prophet, speaking deception to us in the guise of God's truth. As our Gospel reading today explains, there is no middle ground. There is strength in unity, and a divided house will not stand. As Jesus says, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. You're either a follower of Christ or you're not. You can't just read your horoscope only occasionally, or consult the psychic just a little bit, because even a little bit of danger 
is dangerous. So what happened to King Saul when he consulted a medium, the witch of Endor? He asked her to call up from the dead the spirit of Samuel, hoping for some bit of reassurance that the battle against the Philistines the next day would go in his favor. Instead, Samuel's spirit told him, well, no, it's not going to go well for you. Beginning in verse 16, Samuel says, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me. But the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David. He goes on to tell Saul that tomorrow he and his sons would be dead with him. Not quite the ending Saul was hoping for, but that is exactly what happened the next day. A stark reminder that God is in control and will always have the last word. It's very easy for us to forget Scripture's admonitions against the occult and God's warnings to trust in Him alone and be alert for false prophets. It's easy to not see beyond the narrow focus of our lives in the present. It's easy to think Satan is just some cartoon character or the antagonist in the story, the foil who opposes the protagonist of Christ in the biblical literature. But faith tells us this isn't just a story about good and evil. Satan is very real, and Jesus has very definitely conquered him. The book of Revelation tells us, And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. For while Satan's power on earth is limited by God now, in the end times his power will be cut off completely. In the meantime, Christ has given us armor, and we should remember that often a great deal of the battle is not offensive, but simply enduring the attacks of the enemy. Perhaps the greatest of this armor is the shield of faith, with which we can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. The devil focuses all of his cunning into separating us from the word of God, which is the kryptonite that he desperately fears. We're told to trust in the Lord alone, but how do we know that God will protect us from such evil? Because he already has. The battle against evil has already been won for you. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus was victorious, so now we trust in his victory. There's an old saying that you are what you eat, but it's also true that you are what you sin. When you drink too much and it begins to control you, you become an alcoholic. You take on that title. You become this and it becomes you. If you were a C or D student in school, you were labeled as such and even your report card said so. We become what we've done. And when Jesus took your sin upon himself, he became your sin so you wouldn't have to. He became your sin and it died with him and it descended into hell with him. You have been set free. You're no longer bound in chains. The law convinced you that sin was yours forever, but the gospel of Jesus Christ has set you free. Jesus took so much of your sin, all of it, that he became the very sin that you now cannot even feel. He became sin and gave you faith to believe. Your sin is gone. The devil has nothing to hold over you now. Martin Luther advises, so when the devil throws your sins into your face and declares that you deserve death and hell, tell him this. I admit that I deserve death and hell. What of it? For I know one who suffered and made satisfaction on my behalf. His name is Jesus Christ, Son of God. And where he is, there I shall be also. Satan can only hurt you if God allows it, or if you invite him in. There's enough evil in this world for us to deal with already without us seeking it out. So don't go looking for trouble, in other words. You might find it, just like King Saul did. I walked into Walmart a few years ago, and as I grabbed a cart and entered the main part of the store, I could see some commotion happening many aisles down, about three quarters of the way back. There were people gathered around a woman who was talking. I thought she must be a vendor, handing out coupons or food samples or something like that. I didn't pay it too much attention. But as my shopping brought me closer to that end of the store, I saw people who'd been talking to her, walking away, carrying flyers, advertising her services as a psychic reader. 
She had set up shop in the cereal aisle with a shopping cart as her base of operations. There were no groceries in it, just this stack of flyers she was busy dispensing. I was irritated by this, by the boldness of it, by the evil I saw there, drawing people away from God and toward deception and lies. I decided that I was not going to stop and listen, nor would I just pass by her, politely decline her flyer, and keep on shopping as so many others were doing. This I was just not going to stand for. So I asked the Lord to give me the words, and I pushed my shopping cart down that cereal aisle toward her. By the time I reached her, I knew I was going to tell her, Jesus doesn't want you doing this. But I never got the chance. When I was still a few steps away, everyone else left. So there we were, just the two of us, a few feet apart. Our eyes locked, and no words were necessary. She looked intently and deeply into my eyes for a few long seconds, and then she picked up her stack of flyers, left her shopping cart behind, and walked out the nearest exit. As I watched her leave, I silently praised the Lord for his goodness and protection. <clears throat> when that psychic looked into my eyes, I'm not who she saw there. The Spirit of God is in me. I belong to Jesus, and so do you. Trust in his victory. Satan doesn't want you to realize it, but it is finished. <coughs> Remember that you have something King Saul did not have, and I don't mean your horoscope. You have Jesus. Hold tightly to him alone. In the name of Christ.
Heavenly Father, we praise you for all that you have created. From the majestic mountains dusted with snow, the wide open lands dotted with colorful foliage, and the deep blue oceans filled with creatures big and small. Let us sing your praises so others may come to know that all your creation is a gift for us. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, you fulfill all the needs of your people in our community of faith. Let us be mindful of your generosity so that we may be generous to others who are in need. We pray especially for those who do not know the promise of eternal life we have in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and powerful God, we pray for those who are in influential roles for our nation and world. Prompt them to seek your guidance and wisdom in all matters for the sake of your people. Let us not remain complacent in our civic duties, and teach us how we ought to pray for peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious provider, we pray for the healing needs of your people. You are the only one, Lord, who can get us through any and all trials. So we humbly give our troubles and cares to you, and trust that you will work through everything according to your will. We pray especially for those of our brothers and sisters that we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. Please take a few minutes to share that peace with one another.